this month I've been talking about finances and um, the reason one of the things about finances is that makes it very challenging is this is that when you have finances you can do a lot when I talk to Christians one of the things I notice about Christians is this when it comes to finance one thing I notice which is very painful is this Christians when it comes to finances it seems as if the prayer for money is the only prayer that God does not answer. That's what it seems like to me. That the prayer for money is the only prayer that God does not answer. I've seen people that feel as if, you know, Christianity is calm because they had challenges, they had this problem, and nothing came through. I've seen that happen. And, you know, on the other side of finances also, I've struggled as a Christian. The reason why is this. The popular teaching of God's blessing, the popular teaching of God's increase connotes that you can be jobless once you can pray and command and use your faith, money will come to you. But when you look at the practical teaching of the Bible, it's away from that. The practical teaching of the Bible does not support what mainline theology is saying today. What mainline theology says, especially in the Pentecostal circle, is this, that you can just sit at home and confess your faith. You don't have to get a job and just release. I can see people writing, I want to have one billion, and just confessing and confessing. People that are lazy at their job says, I'm believing for double promotion and all of those kind of things. And that's because they do not understand the Bible. When it comes to finances and praying for finances, and I want to lean back today because I'm going to show you from God's word what you can really do to have a financial explosion. Because I think that because of the peculiarity of developing countries, it is unfair for a pastor to teach us about finances and giving finances and stewardship finances without being involved in how the people even get the money. And all of you watching from developed countries, you, I mean, the money, is, the money, you will have the money, but how to manage the money is also important because God is not just interested in you giving, God is interested in stewardship, the management of the finances. And the reason I'm saying so is this, the popular teaching is this, that if you need finances, someone will bring some money to you, bring you, someone will write you a check, someone that you don't know will come and bring you three million naira or three million dollars or ten thousand dollars and say, hey, God spoke to me, take this amount of money. Does that happen? Yes, it does. I've had people, I remember one time, I, I, if I, not just one time, several times in my, in my life, I, either our church had a need or had a personal need and from nowhere, someone will walk up to me and just give me money. There was a time I was outside the country and the lady met me in the car park. I'm telling you, this is ridiculous. And just said, I just perceive you a man of God. I, wasn't, I was wearing a t-shirt and just said, I just want to give you some money because I perceive that on your life. I was shocked to my bones. But as much as I believe in that, I do not think or subscribe to the ideology that that's how God wants to bless you consistently because those are financial miracles. Unfortunately, the way we have been taught, we have been taught to think that financial miracles are the, is the way that God wants to bless us. I don't think so. From the Bible, the Bible speaks of two ways God blesses people. He talks about the miracles where God will do something miraculous, will interrupt in the natural system of process and send you money and raise on to give you something. But the other thing I see that is more consistent about how God blesses his people is this, that when God is blessing his people, what does he do? He blesses them through the works of your hand. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, it says, I will bless the works of your hand. And the works of your hand means that if you are if you are a doctor in that medical field where you operate, God is saying as you begin to work hard, I'm going to put and inject my favor. I'm going to inject my blessing in such a way that your result will not be like other people. It will be exponential. And let me say something quickly. The reason why you need a miracle in the first place was because something went wrong. Let me give an example. The reason why you need a bodily miracle, a healing miracle, is because something went wrong with your health. If something did not go wrong with your health, you will not need a body miracle. If something does not go wrong in your finance, you will not need a financial miracle. It's time that we stop the miracle mentality and start thinking of the blessing. What is the blessing? I'm not believing God for healing. I'm believing God for health. It's time to stop believing God for this one miracle here and another handout here. What I'm believing God is financial freedom that I will get to a place that there will be systems in place that all of my financial needs will be met regularly just because of the system that is in place. The same thing if you run a business. 
And, and the reason I'm saying so is this. So watch this now. Most people do not want this kind of thinking because, you know, when you're talking about the financial stream and the financial system, it includes what you have to do, the planning you have to do, the budget you have to do, how you have to run your organization. But when you talk about financial miracle, it's spontaneous. It just comes like that. It really has no responsibility on you. But watch this now. Nobody in the scripture was rich with financial miracles. Nobody. Everybody in the Bible that the Bible says was wealthy, they had financial blessings, they had financial system. They talk about Abraham. Abraham was, 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 Abraham was a farmer, was rearing animals. Talk about Isaac. Isaac was a farmer. Talk about Jacob. Jacob rare animals. They were not, it was not a one-time thing. And I'm saying so because the other people, I want to ask you something. When you read the story of Elijah, was Elijah rich? I don't think so. But Elijah had raven feeding for periods. The woman of Zion feeding for a period. But those were financial miracles because the way it's designed, financial miracles do not make you rich. It's interception to help you solve a problem. How God wants you to be wealthy is through a financial system. But the church for a long time has kept teaching financial, what? Financial miracles as the way that God wants to sort to prosper and that's why the, that's where the disappointment mean I feel the hurt of Christians that feel as if God has disappointed them because they pray the fast they sow the tithe but in the time of need nothing came through I understand that but the reason most of that happened is this most people do not realize that the financial miracles is not really the prime way God wants you to be blessed how God wants to be blessed is by blessing the works of your hand is by blessing the works of your hand is by blessing the works of your hand so if God says I will bless the works of your hand the question is this if you are not walking what does he bless if your hand is blessing that blessing if your hand is empty that blessing becomes suspended in the spirit until something gets into your hand that can receive the blessing that can encapsulate the blessing that can make the blessing manifest that's why I love Psalm 23 Psalm 23 is very powerful Psalm 23 says it says you anoint my head with oil but my cup runneth over he says your anointing anointing comes upon my thinking but the impact of my anointing shows in my cup my cup is my bank account my cup is my career that means that when the anointing begins to run on your life the impact will show in those areas the way i carry out my business the way i carry out my living the impact will show there and i'm saying this because i really feel the pain a lot of Christians I know are suffering financially. A lot of them cannot pay their bills. They struggle. They struggle for the finances. And there's this sense of resentment for most people that is God failing me. What am I not doing enough? And what most of them have done over time is that there is wrong expectation from God because of what wrong teaching. And that's why today I'm talking about mastering financial dominion. Mastering financial dominion. And some people have said, I need to, I'm just going to sow. It's good to sow, but financial, financial increase and wealth is going to be more than sowing. It's good to command angels. It's going to be more than commanding angels. There are principles that guide these operations. Glory to God. Even if you run an organization, you must have financial laws that guide your operations. If you run your life, you must have financial principles by, by which you live by. So today, we're talking about mastering financial dominion, and we're going to look into the Bible and see how God thinks. And just for you to know, Jesus Christ used more money examples and spoke about money more than any other teaching. Matthew 25. Let's look at that quickly. Matthew 25. The Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is, a, is as a man traveling into a country, who called his own servant and delivered unto them his goods. And he gave unto one five talents, and it, when the Bible says talent, talent doesn't mean like I can sing. No, talent in, the, in this context is actually money. You know, it, it's like when you say it's a talent of gold. It's actually money. He gave one five talents to another two, to another one. Guess how he gave them not because they were favorite. He gave everyone according to a several ability. And straight away he took his, his journey. You know what I notes about God? The first thing is this, this is amazing. There's no one that I know that is wealthy that's not looking for having my money. There's no one. Talk about Dangote, talk about Elon Marx, talk about Alibaba, talk about Je Jeff Bezos. You know, you see, you see all of them, you know, some of them billion, several billionaires in dollars, but they're trying to make some more. They're trying to make some more. All those people are several billionaires in dollars, but they're trying to make some more. See, your motive for making money matters, but that's not the focus on today. But what I want to say is this. 
The reason why you need to be financially free is this. This should be your goal. You get to a point you can live your life without having to bother about money. And when you see people like this are very rich, still want to make more money, it will tell you that maybe the goal is not money itself. Maybe it's what money can do. That is what the goal is. That is what the goal is. Glory to God. So the question, so the question you're asking is this. Okay, I'm stuck financially. How do I make more money? There are many of you are here. I'm praying. Many of you are praying for finances in your business. Praying for finances in your business. How do I get through? Okay, things have gone wrong in my industry. I need to just succeed financially. So the first I want to see is this. So in Matthew 25, Jesus Christ tells a very powerful story. And in this story, he begins to demonstrate the character, the practicality, the pattern of God's kingdom. The first I want to see is this. The Bible says in verse 25 that he, when he was traveling, he called three servants and gave them five talent, two talent, one talent. And you know his expectation? His expectation was simple that they will make money while he was not around. That's the first principle of, you know, that's the first principle of financial dominion. What's the first principle? The law of intentionality. What does it say? You have to be intentional about your financial goal. Your outcome in finance is more predictable if you are intentional. Your outcome financially, this, this is what the Lord intentionally says, your financial outcome in life is more predictable if you are intentional. That's the law of intentionality. This man was going to travel for, was going to travel the journey and he called three servants. He gave one five talent. He gave one two talent. He gave one one talent. He didn't say, just go ahead and make money. He says, hey, when I'm away, I expect my money to be growing. What happens to most people is this. Most people just pray and say, God will do it. Listen to me. I know God will do it, but God needs you to also act. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the horse is prepared against battle, but victory belongs to God. What does that mean? It means that number one, man has to prepare why God gives the victory. That means you have to do your own groundwork when it comes to finances, and God has given the victory. You have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. Someone says, what do you mean? You know, look at the story of Dubai. Look at the story of Dubai. Dubai is a huge story of success. I, I heard a story, I don't know how true this is, that in the 70s, the, the head of Dubai came to Nigeria trying to get a loan. And when he came to try to get a loan, when he came to get a loan, they asked him and said, um, yeah, and said, how would you want to pay back? And he said, you don't have anything to pay back. And so Nigeria did not lend Dubai a loan. But the man had the vision. Today, Dubai is a hot spot for tourist destination all across the world today. Because someone had the vision. Not just a vision, he was intentional about it. This man was traveling and he gave some five talents. He gave some two talents. He gave us one talent. He says, when I'm away, I want, it, I want to be making money. You have to be intentional. You know, um, you know my sister-in-law, her name is Tokwe. I remember Tokwe went on a waste of journey. And recently she was telling me, he said, you not believe it, I've lost 20 kg. Many people will see the picture of what she was and what she is today and be like, oh my God, I want to have that. Listen to me, you don't have it because of desire, you have it because you are intentional and you begin to pursue it. See what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. Paul says this. He said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And by that grace which was, and the grace which was bestowed upon me was not bestowed upon me in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all. If you have grace for finances, it should show in how hardworking you are. It should show in you starting businesses. It should show in you working hard to add value. You can't just say, I receive financial grace. I receive financial grace. I call it for, I call, no sir, it's going to show. Paul says, hey, I am what I am by the grace of God, that the grace of God was so heavy on me, I labored more than them all. If you have financial grace, it should change the way you run your company. You're not going to run like a mediocre. You're not going to run like a local company. You're going to put standard, excellent systems and produce superior values and superior product to it. You must be intentional. It's amazing because this, 
this story is talking about our, our heavenly kingdom. He said the man was going far and he gave them, he gave, he gave them so what must I be intentional about? Someone says, okay, what does intentional mean? This is what you have to be. This is what intentional mean. If you are intentional about your financial goals, you will be pursuing it. Proverbs 18 verse 1 says this. He says, true desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermittent with all wisdom. Just one question. Someone says, how old you are should be equal to the amount of books you have on finance if you're serious about your finances. You know what I noticed? Broke people don't have books on finance. And that's the way, way they are. If you're really interested in your finances, are you reading about finances? You have to be intentional. What are you intentional about? Number one, be intentional about have a financial goal. Do you have what you want your net worth to be by the end of 2020? Do you have a goal in terms of revenue? What you, want to, what you want your company to make this year? Do you have that kind of goal? That this is what I want my company to make this year? Do you have that kind of goal? Because this is even the tiring thing. Even when you're praying, you just say, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me. God is wondering, what is bless me? Can you be specific? James 1 says, you ask and receive not because you ask and miss. Your prayers are too general for a specific intervention. How much do you want to call in sales? How much do you want to call in a net profit? How much do you want? How much do you want to make sense? Well, you know, I only have a salary. The only way I can increase money is that I'm promoted. You have to think bigger than that. Although you have a salary and an income, you can have a side hustle. Don't put your financial destiny on your boss. That's not a wise thing to do. So you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional about your saving goal. You have to be saving. The reason why is this. And, and this is the beauty of tithing because in tithing, where you give 10% of your income to God, you also learn the discipline of not spending everything. Listen to this. It's easy for someone that saves to tithe, but it's very difficult for someone that does not tithe to save because it's a discipline you have to cultivate. Question, this year, do you have a saving goal? Is that a percentage of your income you save? Because you say you're intentional, but are you intentional about your saving? Are you intentional about your saving? So the first thing I see here is this. I, I see the law of intentionality. If you're going to do well, if you're going to prosper, you have to be really, really intentional about it. The second law is this. Mastering financial dominion. And let's read now. The Bible says in verse 2, And he gave five talents, two talents, and two one, to every man according to his several ability. This is very powerful for me. You know why it's powerful for me? Number one, it's the law of ownership and compensation. What's, it's the law of what? Ownership and cons- compensation. What does the law of ownership state he says if you own something you provide for what you own praise god if you own something you provide for what you own hallelujah only an irresponsible manufacturer creates a product and does not support it what does that mean to me listen to me the reason why the man gave talent to the five to to one five two and one was simple he was simple they were his servants as a responsible master you take care of your servant you know i'm saying this to you you have to have that mentality that i'm not in this world by myself i'm a child of god i'm sponsored i'm a child of god i'm provided for listen to me no 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 soldier goes to any war but on his own charge i I don't know if you get what i'm saying The, the the this is what the bible says Ah, oh glory to God. Battles and assignments are never at the expense of a soldier. Battles and assignments are never at the expense of the soldier. What does that mean? Because the servants have a master, it's the work of the master to take care of them. So when you think of your finance, you must think from an abundance mentality that God takes care of me. There's nothing I need that God has not supplied. Because, listen to me, I'm not even here to live for myself. I live for him. And because I live for him, he takes care of me. That's what happens. He takes care of me. God takes care of me. God takes care of me. Oh, glory to God. God takes care of me. Look at the story in Luke 15, verse, 20, verse 16. The Bible speaks of the prodigal son. And when he would have fain have filled his belly with ox that the swan did eat, no man gave to him. He came to himself. And what did he say? See what the prodigal son said about his father. He said, how many hired servants of my father have enough bread, enough bread and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. He was saying that my father 
father is responsible has a son and sorted even the servant are not hungry i'm saying to you as a child of god when you understand this you will have abundance mentality there is no amount of money you need for business that is not provided for there's no amount of connection you need that is not provided for the reason why is that the master must take care of the servant the father must take care of the son so i live from a place knowing i belong to him if i belong to him he's responsible for me and there's no dream in your heart. There's no business dream in your heart. There's no financial dream in your heart that is going to shock God and go say, ah, oh, that's so big. No, Ephesians says this, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far beyond that which we can ask or even think. Hallelujah. He said, it's not enough what you can ask. It says, be not even enough what you can think. He said, far beyond what we can ask or think. Don't think that that dream in your heart to start an energy company is just, it's just small no sir don't give up on that dream on an international head office in singapore and on that office in new york don't give up on that dream your god that put the dream inside has resourced you look at someone close to you and tell them i'm living a sponsored life the same way no soldier goes to war buying his own equipment i can't come to life with my heaven if i'm not provided for me that's the law of ownership so the reason why I can dream, the reason why I have an abundance mentality is because I know who owns me. Ho ho! Hey hey! I know who owns me. Only an irresponsible manufacturer creates a product that what? That cannot support it. If God created me, he will support me. When, when Mercedes-Benz starts a car, Mercedes-Benz will create spare parts because they know that that car is likely to develop problems. When God made you, he knew you would run into financial problems. So he created a spare part. So when I run into problems, I don't go in prayer out of panic. I go to prayer in assurance that Father that I've seen ahead and has provided for such a time like this, let it come forth. So I'm not cringing and praying and crying. No, sir, I'm leveraging on who Christ is. Glory to God. But guess what? The law of ownership also says something. Not, not just that I'm taking care of also something else that whatever I have does not belong to me that's what it is see let me tell you something you really think all those people that have money worked hard for their money they did but let me ask you something the wisdom they had the breath in their nose the good health who owns it they can't boast that they own it because Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Listen to me. Wealth is entrusted. We are nothing but stewards of wealth. And this is why people get it wrong. The moment you start holding on to wealth more than what you should hold on to, you have the wrong relationship with money because it's given to you. Oh, I went to Harvard. You didn't plan to go to Harvard. You didn't even choose your parents. Don't, um, uh, don't overemphasize your participation in this thing. I know you're working very hard, but the fundamentals in which you use is actually given to you. You know what that does to you? When you know that I'm just a steward of all these resources, I'm careful the way I spend it because I must spend it to please the principal owner. That's why I tithe, not because it's easy for me. That's why I give an offering. That's why I help the poor. Because I need to spend the money the way he wants me to spend it. It's not really about it is tough or it's not tough. I'm just a steward. Glory to God. The question is, that, will you be a good steward? Will you be a good steward of God's resources? That's the question. Will you be a good steward of God's resources? Imagine, who has died right now and you see that the person took their wealth with them? Nobody. Naked we came into this world. Naked we go back. The second law, the first law of financial dominion is this. What's the first law? You have to be intentional. So after this message, can you go ahead and get a plan? Hey, call your wife, call your husband. Say, what's our financial goal for the year? What's our financial goal for five years? What's our financial goal for the next 10 years? Let me tell you something. All of you that marry couples, your kids are going to get to university and secondary school and those things cost money. You need to start saving for those things right now. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Someone said to me, how can you say my life is sponsored and I have all this need and all these things are happening, all this kind of thing. Let me just say this quickly. Let me just quickly. 
every limitation in result or manifestation of result is a shortage of light. That's what it is. Because the more you have light, the more you have result. You cannot have light and act on and not act on it. If you have light, you don't act on it. It's because the light is not sufficient. You can't see light and walk in darkness, sir. You can't see that. See, if you say you have seen it and you walk in darkness, you have not seen it. The proof of light is results. Bible says wisdom is justified of our children. Glory to God. The fourth law is this. The law of the seed. The Bible says, and then when he that received, verse 16, the five talents, I traded with the, traded with the same the Bible says, and made another five talents. And he that had two, the same thing, he gained two also. And when he had received one, went and digged in the hurt and hid his, his lot's money. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying so to you? The law of the seed. I, I, I know that popular Pentecostal teaching says seed is the money you sow. But seed is not just the money you sow. What is seed? Seed talks about potential. What's the law of the seed? This is the law of the seed. Have a look up here. The law of the seed is simple, that everyone has something that, can, that carries your financial future. That's what the law of the seed. The law of the seed is simple, that your, fi- your future result is in a seed. That's the law of the seed, that your future result is in a seed. All results and outcomes start as a seed. God gives every man a seed. The seed is not money. There's something you have that carries your financial future. There's a potential that your company has that carries your financial future. The future is in the seed. Let, let me break it down a little here. You know, Moses said, how will I deliver Israel? Out of the hands of what? How will I deliver Israel? Out of the hands of, um, of, 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 um, of Egypt. And what God used to deliver Israel was already in the hands of Moses. What was it? Moses' rod. The woman that had nothing went to meet Elisha. He said, I have nothing. Elisha looked at her and said, woman, what do you have in your house? He says, your servant has nothing except a jar of oil. And Elisha said, what you have is enough to produce your future. The major problem with poverty thinking is this. Poverty thinking convinces you that you don't have anything to create your future abundance thinking tells you that you have something but it's in the potential you have something in its seed form and that thing can create your future so the reason why people eventually become poisonous they keep dis- disregarding the seed that god has put within them they keep disregarding the seed that god has put in them this is what the bible says in the new testament he says that God would minister seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God is very faithful. God will always give seed to the sower. But watch what? He gives seed to the sower. Why did he not say God gives seed to everyone? Because it takes some with a sowing mindset to recognize seed. What happens is this. There's no difference between seed and bread. The difference between seed and bread is how you see it. So some people see something, they see an income and they say let's spend it. They've seen bread. So people see that income and they see what they see what the income can become one of the fundamental difference in between are the rich and the poor think is this the rich wants to buy a car and he says let me hold on this one to buy a car let me invest it let me use the return on investment on this car to buy the car you know so he buys the car later on and when he buys the car he has the car and he has the investment he used to buy the car the poor takes and borrows and buys the car and begins to go into further and perpetual poverty that's what i'm saying the power of the seed everybody has something everybody has something everybody has something jesus christ got to that place he said let's feed the multitude they said we have nothing he said five loaves and two bread he said that's enough everybody has something that can translate into your financial future peter Peter was by the boat. And Peter, and when just guys came to Peter, all that Peter had, he had caught nothing. All Peter had was a boat that could not produce nothing. He offered Jesus the boat. And Jesus took the boat and used it. And the harvest came as a result of that. Why am I saying this to you? 
anywhere you are in your life there's something you have currently there's a very powerful story that i always hear and this is a powerful story of um of upper winfrey that she was so broke people that were broke called her broke she came to herself she had no money she had nobody and she said what do i have he said the only thing they've told me since when i was young is this that opera you can talk he said so i began to think about it she began to value that talking seed and she talked her way to become the richest black woman in america today i'm saying so listen to me i've seen people that you see their hands in papers or you know, their finger they are using them for rolex losing them for to advertise for risky jewelries and those things are being paid twenty thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars their face are not even fine their legs are not even fine, but they have fingers. The reason why is that they understand that their fingers are seeds. The challenge is not that you don't have something. The challenge is that what you have, you keep despising it. What you have, you don't have a source mentality, so you are not able to recognize it. Some of you, it's not even something you have. It's a relationship that you have. Some of you, because of how you have built relationship and you have integrity, you know what happens? Your integrity can translate into what I call, into what is called creditors, um, 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 into suppliers credits where they can give you supply of certain raw materials and they will tell you please take it don't pay back yet just send it and return it back and what is the currency for that transaction is actually your integrity the reason i'm saying so is this until you identify your seed your future your future your future is nothing because what carries your future is the seed it's the seed Look at eBay. How did eBay start? The man that had eBay had some furniture and piece of gadget that he had used and he wanted to use again. So he set up a thing on the website and advertised it. And people began to buy. Then his friend noticed how they bought his things and told him, Oh, will you help us sell our own secondhand items also? He got it and sold it. Before he knew it, people were selling him more. He began to charge them for helping them sell and make money from the other end also. Today, eBay is worth billions of dollars. Who knew that that singular idea could translate there? The thing is that the seed can be an idea. The seed can be a talent. The seed can be a concept. The seed can be something. But until you identify that seed, until you what? Until you identify that seed, until you begin to treasure that seed, you will not go forward. You must see that seed. Glory to God. See what the Bible says in the book of... See what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10. He says, But as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but waters the earth, and bringeth forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower. Did you see that? He says, And bread to the eater. So shall my word go out of my word, mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. That in that I will prosper. In it you shall prosper. So he says, as the word of God is going. And let me say this here as I close. Someone says, okay, I'm stuck in life. Let me, let me say two things. Someone says, okay, I'm stuck in life. You said I have something. Pastor, I don't have anything. I don't know anybody. Hold on in a minute. I'm going to tell you how you can discover the seed. But some of you, you are asking yourself, well, I'm already doing well. The consulting business is doing well. The real estate is doing well, but I want to go further. In Genesis chapter 1, verse, I think, 11 or 13, that's what it says in Genesis chapter 1. It says, the way that God designed every seed, it said, let every seed produce seed, that inside the seed, there are other seeds. That's what happens. So in one apple tree, in one apple seed, you will find other seeds inside. What am I saying to you? You already have a seed that is growing and expanding. When you look into that seed, there are more seeds. You will notice something that companies like Apple, companies like, you know, IPM or HP, they started with something, but they discovered another gold in another sector of that thing. I was reading recently, we see about Nokia. Uh, that Nokia, I'm not sure if it's Nokia, has gone into medical manufacturing, something like that. I was so shocked. Something like that. The reason why is that as you're operating in your current business, if the eyes of your spirit are open, you will see dimensions in that thing that you have not seen before. How do I know this? Peter was an expert fisherman. He had fished all his life. But he did not know that if when you catch fish, 
you can process fish so much so that what you get from fish, holding on to fish, will be more than selling the fish. Jesus Christ told Peter, he said, open the mouth of the fish. There's more inside. There's a way. All existing businessmen and career people, please listen. You will go to God in prayer. You will say, Lord, this, is, I mean, before, this, this prayer is very faith-based. This kind of prayer, you go to God in prayer. And you say, Lord, I'm not asking for a breakthrough. I know that there's a seed in my current employment. There's something in this job that can make me go higher. I know in this business there's a seed because you make seed inside seed. And as you begin to pray, what's your prayer? The same way you open the eyes of Peter and give him clear instructions what he should do to the fish to see the morning side. I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, you open my eyes to see it. And let me say something to you here. What God will begin to show you might come as a flash of an idea. It might be a concept. It might be a problem. But the power to recognize the seed is based on your mindset as a sower. Listen to me. It says, God giveth seed to the sower and bread to the bitter. When you are an eater, you will see seed and call it bread. There are many women that will come and say, I'm looking for money for my business. And when they came, you look at the ear rings in their ear, 100,000. You look at the bangu and the shoe on the back, 500,000. My sister, you are not looking for capital. You are wearing capital all over you. You have just not been able to recognize the seed that is in you. There are some of you, there are vital relationships that should pull you next level. But out of pride, you are not able to do that. So as you begin to go to God in prayer, God will begin to speak to you. This what Proverbs 21 verse 20 says. He said, there's more treasure desired. There's treasure desired in the dwell of the righteous. That means as a righteous person, there are treasures inside you. What do you do? You don't say, Father, give me something you say father i know there are treasures here and you begin to develop the mindset of a sower what is the mindset of a sower this is potential is not full blown this is potential is not massive it's a tiny form it's a tiny form and that's why elijah he told the servant he says go and check if you see something the servant came back and said i saw a cloud he said boy it's a small cloud a man's hand elijah said get up and start running you know why elijah understood if i can pray on to the point that i see the hand like a cloud then the rain is going to fall you are going to travel in the spirit you are going to travel in bible study on to you see the cloud form in your heart once the cloud form in your heart it's a sealed deal you go towards it and there'll be an explosion the challenge is this this is the challenge once you're going through that process of incubation once you're going through that process of birthing new business level once you're going through that period of betting new financial dimensions most people get distracted because they keep comparing themselves with their friends that have gone ahead that's why elisha told the woman he said when you get home take the jar of oil borrow vessels and lock the door lock the door shut out the distraction you know why the fact that they've gone ahead of you does not mean they're ahead of you there is a grace to catch up and supersede them but most people are distracted so you shut the door as you shut the door you go in intensity of the spirit and in the spirit of faith having your mind stayed up and you begin to dig in the spirit and you begin to pay attention what do you pay attention to there will be signs on the outside there will be concept on the outside as you pay attention you understand what the spirit of God is doing you conceptualize it you birth it through the spirit by your prayers by fasting by confession and by sowing seed as you do that you will become unmovable you know why once you lay spiritual infrastructure no natural force can stop you again this way your finance will change this way your business will change this way your career will change i speak over everyone listening today that in the name of jesus christ this month financial struggle is over for you i speak over everyone watching listening participating that this month you will see the seed this month you will see the seed you will see the seed in you you see the seed in your business everything that is covering your eyes from seeing that veil is being removed permanently by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name we pray amen and if you're not born again i want to pray for you how can this start when you don't know jesus will you say this prayer after me say lord jesus i've heard the message i believe it that you died for me you were raised from the death of my justification today i receive eternal life into my spirit in jesus name 
Amen. If you pray that prayer, send a message, either a text message or an email. I would love to pray for you about your newfound faith. Listen to me. The seed, this is very powerful. I want to ask you, go to our YouTube page. Watch this message over and over again because light needs to dawn on your spirit. Watch the last week's message. Listen, because something is happening to you right now. Some of you felt it. That's the power of God's word shining in your heart. Hallelujah.